AI agent is a virtual assistant that can understand your preferences and take actions on top of it. It can send email on your behalf, book appointments, and it can even buy a grocery for you on the basis of your past behavior. AI agent is going to be the hot topic of 2025. Recently, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella has predicted that AI agent is going to replace all the softwares. I think the n notion that business applications exist that's probably where they'll all collapse, right? In the agent era. So if you are a developer who wanted to develop your own AI agent, this is a video to start with. I'll cover the basics of AI agent. Probably in the next video, I'll get started with the demo. So there are many AI framework that has come into the market in the recent time. Few of them is FiData, Crew AI, Langflow. You can use any of the uh, AI framework to develop your AI agent. These frameworks will help you to develop your LLM powered AI agent in faster pace. There are four major components of any AI agent. First is the LLM itself. LLM acts as the brain of your uh, agent. It helps to decide which action to take. There are many LLM models present in the market. Few of them are OpenAI, one of the famous one. Then we have Azure and we have the Gemini. We have Grok, Mistral. So there are many uh, free and paid, both API provider present in the market. Uh, you can use any one for starting and later according to the use case, you can adjust your model. The second component of the AI agent is the tools. Tools are the functions that will help the our agent to search the web, run the SQL query, send the email on our behalf, call any API. So there could be a tool that can interact with your YouTube API. There are other tools which can even send the email on your behalf. So tools are something it can even help you to fire a query on SQL. The third component of AI agent is knowledge, which we are storing vector database. Vector database stores data in embedding. Embedding is the representation in numerical form. So it helps us to give the semantic search that can be provided to the LLM model as a context, which can give us the better output and help the LLM to understand the context better. The fourth and the important part is about the storage. Storage is something which store the recent conversations which you had, what are the actions, recent actions which uh, agent has taken and what is the active session that is available for that particular agent. So for storage, we can use Postgres, SQLite, single store, DynamoDB. We can even use the JSON to store the recent activities in the storage. So this diagram can help you to understand. So if any request come to the our agent that has been analyzed by our LLM model and it takes the use the tools to do some actions. It use the knowledge stored in some vector database. It has the memory which stores the la current active session and the previous active uh, previous sessions. With all this we can create a agent which can autonomously take the decision and achieve the task with the help of language models. To better understand the concepts, let's look into one of the framework in detail. I'm taking the example of FiData. This is FiData site. Um, here you can see all the models which you can use in the FiData. Almost all the API providers are here for LLM. Uh, you can use the various tools here. And if those tools are not present, you can use the functions and create your own tool here. Almost all the vector database you can use here. For the storage, you can use the databases like SQLite, Postgres, Single Store, DynamoDB, even the JSON you can use for the storage. If you wanted to see the uh, Hello World type of example, you can come to Introduction. Here they have given the example where they are creating an agent that is searching uh, using the two tool DuckDuckGo, which is similar to Google and searching on the internet. They have the, uh, so they have created a web, web agent and they have named it as a web, web agent also. They have specified which model they wanted to use and the tools. So for tool, they have given the access to the DuckDuckGo and the instruction is the prompt AI agent. They have just called the method print response. This method call will actually get you the response. So with this basic uh, introduction, you can get started with the AI agent and create your AI agent probably in the next video. We'll actually go into the VS code and 
code the AI agent ourselves. If you are also exploring any of the AI agent framework, let me know in the comment. And if this video has added any value to you, consider subscribing this channel and hit the like button. Until next time, keep learning and see you in the next video. Bye.